Most artists dream about creating a book, but few actually will. And it's not because they lack talent or because they lack skill. It's because the process of independently creating a book is so overwhelming, most give up before they even start. I've released books in the past and made so many mistakes along the way. I've lost money, I've had manufacturing issues, but this year I put all those painful lessons to work and released my new book, Memento. And in today's video, I'm gonna break down the entire process so you can bring your dream of creating a book to life and avoid all the mistakes I made over the years. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So first and foremost, big thank you and shout out to everyone who has supported Memento. This book represents the last 10 years of my creative journey all in one place. I just wanna thank everyone who supported the project. It's been a lot of work getting this out, fulfilling all the orders, and that's the reason why I've been a little bit absent on YouTube. But going forward, my goal is to be consistent with the channel again, especially in 2024. So I'm excited about that. Now, in today's video, the objective is to break down everything that I did to create this book. We're going to talk about manufacturers, we're going to talk about pricing, we're going to talk about some of the strategies behind it, how you can create a body of work that makes sense. Everything is in this video. There's no gatekeeping here. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not gonna tell you to go buy a course at the end of it. So if you enjoy the video and it helps you out, do me one favor, hit the thumbs up button and maybe leave a comment saying you appreciate the information. So step number one to this entire process is the obvious part. It's creating the body of work. Now, I talked in a video way back in 2021 how I was kind of getting started trying to get new photos for a new body of work and some of those photos made their way in to this book. Now, that leads to step number two, which is actually identifying the purpose and intention of the body of work and what story you're trying to tell. For me and this book, Memento, this book basically encapsulates the entire journey I've been on on this YouTube channel and in my personal life and in my creative life all in one place. So the intention with my body of work was to show that progression and that journey and also the way the photos are arranged in this book represents how creativity and life usually end up coming full circle. And something else I wanted to do with this body of work was to have each page represent a gallery wall, represent my love of curation. I wanted each page to have multiple photos. So when someone opened a page, they got a visual experience first and foremost, and then they could go dive deeper into the pages and look at all the individual photos. Something that not to say I don't love about photo books, but sometimes I find myself just flipping through photo books mindlessly, and I wanted this book to have a little bit more depth to it and keep people on individual pages for longer. Once you have a body of work, however that comes together, step three is to secure a manufacturer. Now, the manufacturer I used for this book is called Edition One. Now, I found Edition One actually because they reached out to me, but with Edition One, I was really impressed by the scale of projects they've done essentially. Edition One has done some massive books and I actually spoke with the owner of their company and he showed me some examples of different projects they've worked on and they've done releases of up to 20,000 books which is pretty wild and my release was nowhere close to that size. They were really professional, great company to work with and the prices were what I consider to be fair unlike Blurb that I've used in the past which had just massive upcharges on these products and it made those projects unsustainable. You know, my last two books, the reason why some of those photos made their way into this book is because I could not keep creating those books because the cost of using one of these more, I guess, consumer-based printing companies was just so high book that had about 80 pages was $45 a unit with blurb, whereas with this book, it was close to $25 for $500 or $17 for $1,000. We're going to talk more about that in a second. Now, once the manufacturer was secured, I went back and forth with them to start getting price quotes and understand the total cost of this project. So that is step four, understanding all the costs associated with creating a book and what the different options you have are. Now, the main two options are something called digital printing versus offset printing. Now, digital printing is what you would get from a company like Blurb. Essentially, it's printed just through a digital printer. Now, the pitfalls to this is it's much more expensive, but there's no real startup cost. You can do a smaller run of books with digital printing versus offset printing where you probably need to do 500 or more. And the reason why is because offset printing is essentially printing through rollers. 
I don't exactly know how it all works, but essentially they have to set up these machines to print your book at scale. And that setup takes time, it's costly, but once it's done, they can print as many books as you want. So if you're doing a smaller run of books, it might be good to go with digital, but if you're doing something like 500, 1,000 or more, offset printing makes sense because you're gonna save money that way. Now, speaking of money, here is a breakdown of the cost associated with offset printing 500 books, 1,000 books, and 2,000 books. Now, in this example, we're talking about a hardcover book that is an eight by 10, so very similar to my book, but we're talking about 104 pages. So this this will give you an idea of the total cost associated with a larger scale project like this. If you were to print 500 books offset printed, you're looking at a total cost per unit at $25.95 for that single book, bringing the total cost for your project to $13,000 approximately. So you'd have to pay half that money up front before production began and the second half after production was complete to receive your 500 books. Now, a thousand books brings your cost per unit unit down to $17.09, bringing your total approximate cost for the project to around $17,000. Now, if you were to print 2,000 books, you're looking at a cost per unit of $12.75, bringing your total approximate cost for the project to $25,500. Now, as you can see, the more units you produce, the lower the cost per unit becomes, and that's pretty much the standard with any type of manufacturing. So this is where the video gets a little bit technical, but it's important you understand this before you start manufacturing any books. You want to understand the relationship your cost per unit has to the margin on your product, meaning the cost per unit has a direct relationship to the amount of money you charge for your product to your retail customer. So let's use this book as an example. If you are going to create a 500 unit book order and your cost per unit is $25.95, if you want to maintain a healthy margin of 3 3x, you would need to sell your book at $100. You take $25, multiply it times three, and you add that to 25, giving you a total cost per unit for the retail customer of $100. That's a decent amount of money for a photo book. Some of you might not be comfortable charging that, but it is a sustainable margin. 3X is really good for internet business because there's a lot of hidden costs associated with a project like this, which we will talk about later on. But if you order 2,000 units and your cost per unit is $12.75, you're looking at a 3X margin of essentially $36. So add 12 to 36 and you have $48 as your retail customer price. That's the more technical side to this. I'm going to leave that up to you. Some of you might say, hey, I'm willing to sell my book at a 2x margin even if you order 500. There's no perfect right or wrong way to do this. I just know in the past one huge mistake I made on previous books was having my cost per unit so high that I couldn't have a favorable margin and by the end of the project, I barely made any money after I accrued all my costs. So once you have all that figured out, you're on to step number five, which is laying out your book. This is pretty easy. I like to print photos from somewhere like Walgreens or any drugstore that offers, you know, 40 cent prints. I print out all the photos that I potentially want to put into the book, and then I just lay them out on my desk or on the floor and start pairing pages and figuring out exactly how I want it to look. I find this to be much easier than doing it on a computer screen, but to each their own. Now, once you have the layout, you can add this layout to Adobe InDesign. Now, for the most part, any production house for books is going to have an Adobe InDesign template that they're gonna want you to apply to your book. The reason for this is a little bit more technical than I understand, but essentially these templates match up with the machines that are going to be used to produce your book so they can print the project in the proper dimensions and everything is readable by these machines. That's all I really understand about it, but it's something that is most likely going to come up. So before you get in the computer and try to lay out your book or do anything like that, you want to ask your manufacturer if there's specific things you need to do or a specific template that you have to use to make your project compliant and work properly with their printers. Now step six of this process coincides with step five. You can do these two at the same time, but this is material selection. Any manufacturer is going to give you a list of potential materials that 
that you can use for things like your cover, things like your binding, things like your paper type. I actually wanted to use a heavier weight paper for this book, but unfortunately there were some issues with the book being able to open smoothly, so we went with 100 weight paper. And for the cover, I went with this canvas natural look. Edition 1 sent me a bunch of color swatches to go through. You could feel the material and decide which one worked best for you, and most manufacturers will offer something like this. Now, as for cover design, you can design your cover yourself. I worked with my friend Tommy Bronx to design this cover. He sent me a bunch of different options, and personally, I absolutely love the way it came out. Once you've done all that, once you have your layout, your material selected, you are on to step seven, which is sampling and proofing. Your manufacturer will send you a sample and a proof. This will allow you to go through the book, get an idea of how it looks, and make any necessary changes. I ended up having to change a few things in my book. I caught some small errors that I had. I didn't like certain things about the layout. So after these samples, I changed everything and your sample is going to come basically as a super rough of the book. It's not going to be cut or anything like that. It's just going to be the pages to give you an idea of the printing so you can check it all out and make sure the order is laid out the way you want. Now, once you approve all your samples and everything is good to go, you are on to step number eight, which is production. Now, production time for this book took about three months, and this was produced in the United States. That production time is going to be extended if you're printing overseas. Let's say you're printing in China and your books have to go on a boat. You could be looking at six to eight months of lead time, but with smaller projects like mine and what most of you will probably be doing, domestic printing should work totally fine, and your lead times is going to be two to three months. Now, step nine of this project is what you're going to be doing while your books are being produced. You're going to have a lot of downtime and one thing you can do while you're waiting for your book to arrive is make sure your e-commerce is all set up behind the scenes. Now, the e-commerce tool that I use for my business is Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build EvanRamp.com years and years and years ago, and they've been a huge part of my business ever since. And without them, a launch like this would not be possible. And what I love about Squarespace is they allow me to manage my email marketing as well as a product launch like this. I was able to add a physical product to my web store very easily. All I did was drop in my marketing material, change the SKU on my product, add a description, and we were ready to go. And then when the product was available, I was able to send an email to everyone who signed up for the mailing list based on me promoting that mailing list while the books were being produced. And I actually made a video recently where I break down that entire process. I'll go ahead and link that in the description down below, as well as some other videos breaking down different strategies I use on Squarespace. And if you're looking to start selling any products in 2024, you're looking to launch a book, I can't recommend Squarespace enough because not only do they allow you to sell stuff, they allow you to create a beautiful website to showcase your work, get in contact with clients and even do things like sell courses and sell membership sites. Follow one of those videos, go to squarespace.com slash evanramp, start a free trial and use code evanramp to save 10% at checkout. At squarespace.com slash evanramp, start a free trial and use code evanramp to save 10% at checkout after you follow one of those tutorials. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Now, once we have our e-commerce all set up, we're on to step 10, which is promotion. Now, this book launch, I had a promotional strategy set months in advance. I knew exactly what I was going to do. And while the books were being produced, I essentially executed all these things to have all the materials ready to go at the time of launch. One of the things I did to promote my book was I created a landing page on my website where people could sign up for early access on that book. And I already mentioned that when I was talking about Squarespace. There's a video in the description linked down below giving you the exact breakdown of how I did that strategy. So when I would post on Instagram, a story, or in a YouTube video like like this one, I would mention, hey, I have a book coming out in a month, go to this page, sign up if you want early access and you wanna get a signed copy. It was an easy strategy. All I did was build the landing page and people went there and gave me their email address. And I also made sure to talk about the product a lot on my Instagram as well as my YouTube channel and just get awareness that this book was coming and was currently in production. I wanted to bring my audience along with me. Now, something else I did for promotion with this was I created this book club series on my Instagram and I made sure to create a book club reel for the launch of my book. And I also made a short video 
video, basically taking all the information in this video, condensing it down to talk about how to make a book, and that was another way to indirectly promote the product. But once we have all our promotion done, which is up to you to decide how you want to do that, everyone's going to have a unique plan, but the key is to just make sure you have a plan and execute it while your books are being produced. Now, after that, we had to figure out logistics and shipping. Now, when it comes to shipping, there are so many different options out there on the internet today. I'll let you decide what makes the most sense for your business. It's kind of a tedious topic to talk about, but if you're someone who uses Squarespace, Squarespace does give you the option to fulfill orders and print labels all through the their site. So if you're a Squarespace user like me, this could be the option that makes a lot of sense for you on the logistics side. Now, aside from just fulfilling orders, you have to have all the packing materials necessary to get your product safely to the person who's buying it. And this is where a lot of those hidden costs can start to add up. One example of this is your boxes. If you're going to use boxes, easy fold mailers, you're looking at a cost of $180 per 100 boxes. And then you need bubble wrap to make sure the edges of your book are secure, that's gonna be another $264. And you need tape, you need tape rollers, that is another $200 added to your cost. And I get all these materials from Uline. But some other hidden costs you might not think about are things like trash removal. It cost me $1,000 to remove all the trash associated with this project because the books came in separate boxes, I had to break them down, had to check all the books, and I also had to hire people to help me pack books, which cost me another thousand dollars. And that right there is why it's so important to make sure you have a good margin on your project because all of these costs can add up quickly, especially if you're not aware they'll be there when you're setting your price. It's just good to have that little bit of extra cushion to make sure you can easily handle something like a thousand dollars for contract work or a thousand dollars extra for trash removal but once you get all that done all you got to do is launch the product follow your promotion plan in my case that was post the Instagram content that I created send out the marketing email that I also created and then the product's live and it's available for people to purchase until it's sold out. So if you want to grab a copy, support the project, evanramp.com is where you can do that. But I just wanted to share this information with y'all because I love helping creators and I especially love helping creators not make the years and years of mistakes that I made figuring all this out. 